Hello, welcome to the presentation about how to improve climate and market services for Mangbi in coastal Bangladesh by using social network analysis. My name is Wolfram Simon and I'm a master's student from Wageningen University and research in the Netherlands. Today I will talk about the main findings of my thesis project, which was supervised by Dr. Norm Aguilar from Japingo University, Dr. Jeroen Groot from Wageningen University and Research, and Dr. Timothy Krupnik from Semi Bangladesh. The fieldwork was generously funded by the Blue Gold program in Bangladesh, which is implemented by Mott MacDonald with funding from the Embassy of the Kingdom of the Netherlands. On the following slide, I want to give you a short introduction on why it is most important to support weather and market services specifically for Mangbin farmers in coastal Bangladesh. The map you can see on the right hand side shows the most disaster prone districts of Bangladesh in red, which are all located along the coastline. Nationwide, the most relevant natural hazards are cyclones, floods, and most importantly for this study, heavy rainfall events. This is aggravated by climate projections for South Asia, indicating that sea level will rise and frequency of heavy rainfall events will increase in the upcoming years. This, together with the presence of heavy silty clay soils in the south, often leads to waterlogging, resulting in yield losses, especially in mangrove cultivation. In terms of efficiency, mangrove is an attractive crop for farmers. There is only low input required and market demand and prices are relatively high, leading to a good potential profit. However, there are also drawbacks. Mangbin is very sensitive to water logging, which can lead to a high yield variability from 20 to 90 percent. To conclude, the problems are the regular heavy rainfall and the consequent water logging during Mangbin harvest potentially leading to substantial yield losses. The broader pro project objective is thus to improve the weather forecasting system at a level that is relevant to farmers to protect their crops. However, the question remains on how to disseminate the information from the information provider to mobile farmers. When looking at the demand-driven solution approach, we have to first decide which information we want to disseminate. In this project, we have chosen weather alerts and market prices. Secondly, it has to be decided on what dissemination methods shall be chosen in order to provide the maximum possible farmers with relevant information. After a series of focus group discussion rounds, Simit Bangladesh decided to prioritize interactive voice response technologies, also called IVR. IVR is deployed through mobile phone calls received by farmers. In addition, the project is developing an app to provide weather alerts, mangbean management advice and market information at a level of detail that is more complex than what can be included in IVR messages. As such, the following practical questions about how to deploy information from app users to other farmers are key. How to reach isolated farmers? which are entry points for information interventions, can we use networks interchangeably for the dissemination of different kinds of information? In other words, can we rely on key people in the networks to deploy information from apps in such a way that they reach large numbers of farmers through person-to-person -person information spread? Based on the information we want to spread to the farmers, we decided to look more closely to three different social networks. These included weather and market information networks and a friendship interaction network. All these considerations led us to the overall objective of this project to improve last mile digitally delivered weather and market services to Mongolian farmers in coastal Bangladesh by using social network analysis. The research question we used to guide our project were threefold. First, we wanted to investigate how the farmers in the different regions differ in their access to information. Second, we wanted to investigate how the networks differ in their speed of information flow. And last but not least, we wanted to find out whether there are very popular actors we could use as entry points for efficient dissemination of information. 
The friendship network was used to present the information exchange capacity, assuming that farmers who have a lot of friends also share information with each other on a personal, informal level. Lastly, we hope to identify people, also called nodes in a network analysis, who are likely to spread information from the apps widely through person-to-person -person diffusion. Here you can see Bangladesh from space. When now zooming in on the Putuakali area of the Delta region, we can already see the river branches, which again makes Bangladesh so prone to flooding events. When zooming in more on the Sali region, we see the three regions that Blue Gold Project asks him to prioritize for the study. Let us first zoom in the Chotobikai region, where you can see four circles, the clusters, with the sampling paths in it. The sampling path are the routes the enumerators walked along to randomly sample farmers in step of around 300 meters. The second region was Golishakali and the third one Betagishangipur. Here you can see the overview of the total study area that amounts up to an area of 60 square kilometers. In this slide I will just give you a little overview of the actual method we used. In this study, we collected data from 314 farmers in structured surveys and asked each farmer these three social network questions. Who do you ask for weather and market information? Among farmers who grow mung bean in your area, who do you consider to be a friend with? Then we noted down all the names they could recall and also took data for additional characteristics for each friend in their network, including how they are related to each other, how often they meet, etc. In a second step, we analyzed the data by first systematizing it and then running the actual social network analysis using the iGraph package in the R statistical computer environment. As we wanted to be able to distinguish between regions, but also different resolution levels, we filtered the data for the whole aggregated level where all the three regions were combined, the regional and the cluster level. Then we analyzed different social network metrics like degree, density and centralization, which were all chosen to provide more insights about farmers' access to information and speed of information flow. When we look, for example, at the degree network figure on this slide, then the black node has a degree of three as it is connected to three blue nodes. The link between the nodes is called the tie. Centralization and density were chosen as indicator for speed of information flow. On the figure with the centralization, you can see a star graph, which represents the most centralized form of a network and the ring network, which is the most decentralized version of a network. You can easily imagine that the node central in the star graph probably gets info information faster from every other node in the network than it is the case in the ring graph. Density is just the ratio of possible ties between all nodes of a network divided by the maximum number of possible ties. The theory suggests that when you put information in a network with high centralization and density, the information will diffuse faster to the actors connected to the central node. Let us now look at some social network graphs. First, you see here the three networks on a whole network level, meaning that these networks contain all the actors interviewed and all the actors that were cited by the interviewed farmers in the different regions. The color of the nodes shows the role of the actors and the arrow shows the opposite direction of the information flow. The size of the nodes indicate the degree, meaning how much information a node is receiving or sending to other actors. By just eyeballing the graphs, we can already see that there are substantial differences between them. The weather information network, which describes how farmer got information before the project, demonstrates TV clearly as the biggest node, indicating that it is the most dominant source of weather information for farmers in the study regions. Note, however, that farmers also indicated that television was not always a regular source of weather information. 
In other words, they only got weather information from TV from time to time, rather than every day. And this information was not always with agriculture, agriculture information. The network is therefore highly dominated by one big information provider, which can be also expressed by high centralization. The market information network is less centralized, but still has some central nodes, being brokers and input dealers. The market information network also has the highest number of isolated nodes, indicating that a substantial number of farmers seem to be isolated from the market information. The friendship network is completely decentralized, which means that farmers seem to have very strong relationship among each other. On this slide, we can see the differences between the three regions. On the x-axis, we see the different networks and on the y-axis, the different regions. The weather information network does look pretty similar in all regions. When, however, looking at the market information network, we can see a difference between Shotobikai Kulishakali and Bitaki Shangipur when it comes to the role of the popular actors. In the Shotobikai Kulishakali region, the actors that farmers acknowledge as information sources are exclusively brokers, whereas in Bitaki Shangipur it is almost exclusively input dealers. This is important when it comes to designing dissemination strategies. Also, the Friendship Interaction Network showed a strong difference between Shotobikai Betagi Shangipur and Kuli Shakali region in terms of out degree. Farmers in Shotobikai and Betagi Shangipur seem to be much more connected to other Mangwin farmers than in Kuli Shakali region. Just to remember again, all the nodes in the market network are human actors. The red small nodes are farmers, the bigger yellow nodes are brokers, and the light green ones are input dealers. It is important to understand that all these nodes are actual real people that CIMIT or any other institution can work with in order to improve dissemination systems. When we now look at these graphs on cluster level, we can see that there are substantial differences between the 12 clusters. In this slide, we focus on the market information network to explain such variability. These regional differences underline the importance to create location-specific dissemination strategies. As such, these high-resolution social network graphs can be a powerful decision-making tool to design such interventions. As an example, we want to design an information dissemination strategy. We could use these graphs to detect the clusters with the potentially lowest access to information based on the out degree and the isolated node. In this case, this would be the clusters that are marked with a red frame here, CB3, GU3, and BS3. Interestingly, the upper and the lowest cluster are also the most remote clusters in Shotobikai and Betagi Shangipur region. From this, we can derive that these clusters would be most in need of an improved dissemination system. This practically implies Simit or Blue Gold should collect farmer phone numbers in these areas randomly to distribute information to the farmers. According to the social network analysis, the dense friendship network in all regions would then help to fast and personal dissemination of the respective information, even though not all farmers would be informed by the IDR or the app approach. This approach is also referred to as the broadcasting approach. In regions that are more centralized, meaning that there is one or two strong information sources that farmers are linked to, then Simit or Blue Gold could get the phone numbers of these central actors and provide them with weather and market information by the IVR system. According to their position and function in the information network, these central actors would then diffuse the information to all the connected farmers efficiently and provide them with relevant information in a timely manner. Like this, we can make practical use of high-resolution network graphs. To summarize and answer the research questions, I quickly want to summarize the findings on the slide. With regards to farmers' access to information, based on the out degree and the number of isolated nodes, we can conclude that friendship networks has the most suitable properties for the farmers' access to information as Hmong 
Bohemian farmers seem to have very tightly woven friendship interactions among each other and also exchange information on a daily basis with each other. Thus, we propose to use the favorable characteristics of the friendship network as a proxy to also disseminate weather and market information and to reach also farmer disconnected from the information and communication technologies. When looking at the speed of information flow, the weather information network shows the highest density and centralization and thus speed of information flow. From an intervention point of view, this however must be assessed with care as TV as a source of information in the weather information network is hard to influence due to its formality level. However, due to TV's outstanding popularity as a weather information source for farmers, CIMIT and or Blue Gold should consider to evaluate options to create more location-specific weather information content that they can disseminate via TV. Furthermore, the farmer friendship network seems most efficient in disseminating information to farmers as they indicate a daily frequency of information exchange among farmers, which is the highest among all networks. The weather information network is dominated by the outstanding popular TV as a non-human information source, whereas the market information network turned out to be the most important network from an intervention perspective, as here we found a very influential and human information sender, mostly being brokers and input dealers. The farmer friendship network is highly decentralized and shows no outstanding farmers. The SNA results from this study can help to make analytically informed decisions on the choice of information entry points and broadcasting strategies in order to reach not only well-connected but also isolated farmers with weather and market information. To answer how to reach isolated farms, we first have to ask ourselves whether to broadcast information or to target central actors with information so that they disseminate the information to the farmers. In order to reach the maximum number of farmers, our results suggest targeting the central market actors, the brokers and input dealers, as entry points for both market and weather information while using the uh, high interaction frequency of the friendship network for personal dissemination of broadcasted information among farmers. More analytically, broadcasting information practically means to randomly collect phone numbers of farmers for IVR and is advised when the out degree of the friendship network considerably exceeds that of market or weather network. We would then assume that the beneficial characteristics of the friendship network would outperform those of the actual information networks. The example here be the high out degree in the friendship network in the Shodobikai and Betagishakipur region, which implies a broadcasting situation, whereas in the Goishakalu region, targeting would be more suitable to reach the maximum numbers of farmers. I hereby briefly want to address how to identify input dealers and or relevant brokers practically. One approach could be to conduct a simplified SNA analysis. Only 10 farmer surveys would be sufficient to already give insights about popular brokers and or input dealers. Once the phone numbers of these input dealers are collected, they can be used as efficient and powerful entry points into the farmer information networks. In case that no patterns become evident, the broadcasting approach is applied. When we have high-resolution SNA information, like in this project, we can further identify clusters with high centralization as an indicator for the presence of strongly regarded information sources, and thus effective entry points to link an outside information source uh, with the farmer community network, which is indicated with red circles here. There is one important practical interpretation of centralization that is worth discussing here. High centralization can be commonly related to aspects of resilience and or exclusion of peripheral nodes. The resilience of groups is generally said to be lower when the group relies on only a few influential and central actors like TV in the weather information network and brokers and input dealers in the market information network. When such a popular broker would be removed from the system, 
the whole dissemination system would fall apart and is thus less resilient than in the broadcasting or mixed approach. With regards to interchangeability of networks, the practical question here is whether we can also use the powerful brokers, which are a strong information sender from the market information network to disseminate weather information. Thus, use the different networks for weather and market information interchangeably. Based on the results, we consider two aspects being worth discussing here. According to our study, almost all farmers indicated to be interested in receiving more weather information. Deriving from this, we can assume the interest in weather information to be high and interchangeability to be given. The baseline conditions we measured indicate that television is the primary initial source and information access is infrequent. TV, however, may be a useful mechanism to explore in addition to IBR and the app being developed. The second aspect is the formality level of the source of information. For instance, farmers only receive weather information from formal sources like TV and radio, and it therefore remains an open question if weather information can be disseminated personally and thus informally. This challenges the assumption of using the personal and informal friendship interaction network to disseminate weather information and therefore challenges the broadcasting approach that is based on informal information exchange among farmers. So when we do assume no interchangeability between networks, then we would have to target brokers and input dealers to provide farmers with market information and use TV and radio as an entry point for weather information provision to farmers. Prospectively, the IVR or and the app can potentially become a more important information source for farmers and might substitute the relative dominance of the TV and radio in the weather information networks. This could be nicely assessed by conducting SNAs during different time steps during an ongoing intervention like the IVR or app approach. Under a successful intervention, the sources of weather information would then shift from TV to the novel source of information introduced by the intervention program. To conclude, I want to thank all my supervisors, Tim, Norman and Yarun, for all their great support. Further, I want to thank all the CIMIT staff, the enumerators, the interns, for their dedication during the fieldwork in Bangladesh. Last but not least, I want to thank Blue Gold for funding this project and making this great fieldwork experience possible. It had been a very valuable experience in my academic career and it would have been never been possible without all your great support. Thank you so much and greetings from Europe.